Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician The Civil War, a new strategy and tactics war game out by Oliver Kuppelmuller. Uh, this is episode number 12, I believe, in our Let's Play series where we are playing as the Confederacy. Uh, as always, this was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. There's a link in the description if you're interested in joining those. Uh, I'm streaming about every other day, generally starting around 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we are getting back into the swing of things here. It is 1862, the year just turned over, and we are preparing to move our armies back into northern Virginia and deal with the federal forces there. Uh, we've won a number of battles in the valley. We've lost one major battle near Manassas previously, uh, but overall the war is going pretty well for the Confederacy thus far. We've recently formed the Army of Northern Virginia. We recently unlocked the core capability, and so we've reorganized our forces uh, and also equipped our forces all uh, with a minimum of rifled muskets, at least for the infantry. The cavalry is still woefully armed, but the infantry is, is armed much better than they were just a few months ago. Uh, this is thanks in large part to some imports of Lorenz rifled muskets uh, as well as uh, domestic production uh, I want to see around 50,000 or so locally produced muskets, uh, rifled muskets. With that being said, uh, all the audio you're going to hear from here on out was taken from the live stream. And I am going to go ahead and jump ahead in parts of this video uh, between things. Uh, this is a game that involves a lot of uh, management of orders of battle, management of uh, equipment and, and resources, less so resources, but like equipping units, building weapons, assigning policies, moving armies. There's a lot of downtime between quote unquote action in this game. Um, and because of that, it's not always, I think, as conducive to watching on YouTube as maybe following on a live stream if you're okay with a lot of downtime. And for that reason, occasionally I will jump back and forth and, and whatnot, or not back, but jump, jump forward uh, to make it a little bit less uh, dreary, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the stream where we've been doing some army management. We've been doing some policy management, also getting some railroads ready to build. Uh, but that's where we find ourselves uh, in early 1862. And that's enough of me rambling. So let's get going. Dallas Little Rock is 3 million. Little Rock Memphis is 6 million almost. I wish these stacked in... Like, <laughs> these don't seem to stack at all based on the value of the contract. Anyway, we're, we're starting to get close on some of this subsidy funding for railroads. Only part of the unit. Does it keep disintegrating over time, Dutov, or? just doesn't make sense to me that you'll have a unit that'll enlistment will expire and they don't expire. Okay. Well, we're just going to keep on trudging along. All of our troops appear to be in good, uh, good order. No one's starving anymore. We're building those two depots in the rear there. Man, these depots take a long fucking time to build. Any questions in chat? Anybody uh, curious about anything? I know we've kind of got a little bit of a slow stream. We've been going for two and a half hours. We've only fought one battle. Will it, I guess the question I would have, Dutov, is will it show me how long they're extended for or will it say zero months for that unit forever? Flanker on DC? Yeah, we could do that. Do you mean like up through Frederick? Because the army of the Susquehanna is on our left flank, so we'd probably want to leave some troops there to defend. We could push a core up through maybe to Frederick and then flank toward Baltimore, perhaps. Uh, entire control kneecap. So we actually, let's take a look at uh, the Army of Northern Virginia. I built this entire force. All of these units are raised by me. 
I did make a mill, Rebel. So you can see we've got divisions under, Wal we've got a core under Lee, divisions under Yule and Walton. We've got a core under Magruder with divisions under Hill and Frost. That's DHL, not AP. We've got a division under Joseph E. John, or a core under Joseph E. Johnson with divisions under Cooper and Longstreet. Longstreet is super famous now. Rising star. He fought well in the last battle. He should not be a colonel. How do I promote him to a brigadier? At least. You're not commanding a division. Is it? I guess Cooper is a brigadier as well. The only thing is if I promote him, he loses his initiative, leadership, administration, and cunning. But I'm going to do it anyway. So you can see there he lost a little bit of his cunning. He's now Brigadier General. Didn't look like he lost his other stats, so those stayed. I'd be fine if Albert Blanchard was a, was a frickin' colonel. All right, all my division commanders appear to be brigadiers. Corps commanders are automatically made major generals, except Johnston, who's a brigadier. He'd probably be pissed about that. So we promoted Longstreet. Let's go ahead and promote Cooper. Cooper didn't lose anything, as far as I could tell. How's the opposing AI? They've been doing better strategically. They made an initial move that was pretty interesting, where they brought two armies down on one of mine in the valley, and I thought that was very well coordinated, and I was pretty impressed by that. Naval combat's in the game, but you don't, like, play naval battles in the same tactical way that you play them. It's kind of simulated out. Like, should we, we should promote Johnson also, right? We will. He's now a major general to go along with the other corps commanders. <laughs> well, Nee, I mean, here's the thing. Beauregard lost one battle, but he's been in command of like four or five victories. So I couldn't see, as much as Davis wasn't a huge fan, I couldn't see Davis replacing him at this point yet. So it didn't seem historical to replace him. We may do so at some point, or he may get wounded like J Jackson did for a while. But... Not yet. All right, so some promotions and things like that. Where are we at policy project-wise? We got a lot more money now. Anybody know, like, how the economy works well enough? Like, should I consider investing in railroads? It'll take almost a year to construct this railway between Jackson and Selma. It'll generate $3 million in tax revenues. Always. Charcoal, I knew, I knew you'd be a fan of railroads. But, like, some of these are stupid expensive. Monroe Shreveport, $2 million. I mean, like, I would always think it's probably smart to increase transportation capacity. To me, that always seems like it would be a smart thing to do. Alternatively... I wonder if it would make sense to expand the port of New Orleans, especially since they haven't taken it yet. Well, we'd need considerably more money before that would make sense. So you can see there's a, a subsidy icon here that indicates how close to funding you are for expanding a port. Ports are goddamn expensive to expand. Does it ever make sense? Because those look stupid. Like, I'm not going to spend 50 million to expand a port. I'm a little disappointed the Federals haven't pushed it all on the naval side of things. You'd think they'd make a couple amphibious landings or things like that. Munster, there are naval battles, but not in the same way. You don't fight them tactically. It does tell you projected. So, like, right here, these are rail lines that don't exist, and they'll generate $3 million in tax revenue. This one will generate, I think, 2.8. This one generates 3.1. This one generates three. How much would it cost to do this? Current tax revenue is 350K. 
for this route. And actually, it shows you the rail route on the strategic line. So it would be expanding this east to west rail line here in the heart of Mississippi and Alabama. Arkansas, Little Rock, and Dallas, you can see here. This is the green section down here. Arkansas, Little Rock, Memphis, you can see over here. This would actually be a very useful rail line linking the Eastern Armies to Price's Army, I would think. Savannah, Tallahassee, this is one like right into the interior of Florida and Southern Georgia. There's probably not a lot of capacity there. That's a big one. You can see that would increase revenues by about eight and a half million. So about times 10. LA, Houston, Brashear down here along the coast. Louisiana, that is Houston, Brashear, I assume. New Orleans to Tallahassee down here, really in the deep south. I would also think that this is a big one, 38 million increase in tax revenue. The main problem here is that it costs so goddamn much. You can see we are nowhere near the subsidy funding required. So it would cost 43 million to build that. For 38 million in revenue, that would potentially be worthwhile, but it wouldn't be until like late 62 that it would be ready. We wouldn't recoup our investment if it's 38 million a year until 64. That's that's a real long-term game there. Uh, Shreveport and Monroe, this one is actually, we're almost, we've almost got enough funding here. Not a big increase in revenue, 2.2 million. But that could, I would think, actually, in addition to just the tax revenue that the rail line brings in, this might open up, like, this might be where it would make sense, like, oh, make investments in Texas or other things like that, where this rail line would really increase the capacity and help the overall economy. Because it's not just tax revenue from direct rail revenues, I think. You also consider that it increases the transport capacity by, like, 10,000. Then there's other ones here like the Kentucky Cumberland Gap. We don't we don't control all of Kentucky. If we did control all of Kentucky, we'd have enough revenue to do this and it would be 3.6 million. We could do it now, but we don't control Central Kentucky. And that would be a tough one to defend. New England Union Pacific, Texas Southern Pacific. So my hunch is that I would do Little Rock, Dallas, potentially. Three million. What was the one that was eight? This one also would make sense, I think. I like the idea of Savannah, Tallahassee, but I'm a ways away from having enough subsidy funding to do it. In any event... I guess we're just going to fast forward a little bit longer. Maybe to like March. I want to wait till the campaign season gets better for any kind of thrust into Maryland if the uh, enemy doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, uh, level three mil militia contracts or whatever, so three-year contracts. So actually, that means we need a new policy. So we've done th Militia Act 3. So if we use nine policies, is there any way to like... So you're limited on policies, right? Is there any way to undo a policy? How are you supposed to get more policies open to you? Is there a strong economy there? There's a lot of agricultural shortages within the Confederacy, so increasing. And we saw that at least one of the towns had some foundries that had poor efficiency because transport capacity was maxed out. Hey, that guy from college. Rebellion is going. I don't know if it's going well or not, but it's going. Okay, so... Um, halt contract. I just wish... Oh, shit. Undo that. Can I cancel this policy? No. 
So if I cancel this policy, it also cancels depending policies. So if I cancel one, then two would also go away because it's dependent on it, I think. Utter destruction. Thanks for the follow. Um, well, what am I going to do now? Because I have no more available policies to me. So... Do you know if you can further increase certain lines once they're built? Yes, you can. You can also go down to like the individual railroad level or transportation town level and you can increase capacity there too. All of level one done? I don't think so. I mean, but like, I feel like there's, incon there's challenges here because do I want to do regulars? Do I want to do letters of mark? Letters of mark will hurt our relationship with Europe. We could do print notes, which will give us more money, but that also increases inflation. So that'll hurt our credit rating. The Tariff Act will just counterdict the free, the free Trade Act, so why would I do that, right? Like, that's... They're not compatible with each other, really. We could do civilian warships, but I've been kind of ignoring the naval war. Halt Cotton Trade would improve our relations with Europe. It increases cotton demand in Europe, increases European relations, but it hurts the public wealth within the South. Bounties would increase recruitment, but I haven't really been worrying about that too much. Volunteer units go, uh, go down. We could also pass the draft act. What's the difference between the impressment act authorizes the war department to seize slaves and supplies from producers for buildings and fortifications. While only surplus slaves and supplies are to be taken at fair prices, it will lower the support for the government in the states. It also frees up manpower, increasing the number of available, available recruits. It makes the resupply of armies easier within the Confederacy. Reduces the cost of supplies. Reduces support. Increases recruits. I don't need that right now. Are there any twos that I want? I mean, that's where I'm at. I'm at chapter two. I can't do industrialization because I don't have that policy choice. Requir requires cotton pre-war policy. Uh, I did cotton pre-war policy. So this is what I don't get. Like, if I drop King Cotton 1, does that get rid of cotton King Cotton 2? test it <sighs> well that would probably be the least impact well so what I'm not clear is this is a the tariff act or government funding one like which one of these okay what are we at right now in terms of British intervention King Cotton's a 20% Have a good one, Red. Subcategories of what? There's nothing here that I want. How do I get more policies? I need more policies. It's very restrictive. Regulars gives me a couple of small regular units. The revenue line, but where? I don't want to mess with my finances. That's the problem. So 
So I can get another policy by increasing those subsidies. So I, that'll open up funding two. Or we could go with diplomacy three. Let's go with diplomacy three. Okay. Flower production is... You know, the interesting thing is our demand plummeted. Military policy two enacted. The union strengthens its military. More money to the military. Less men to renew contracts. Does that mean they have cores now? I think they might have cores now. All right, guys. I'm going to jump ahead about 30 minutes in the game here to uh, a battle that we're going to fight near Manassas. Um, we just have about 30 more minutes of sort of me clicking through menus, talking to the chat... Uh, and not doing a lot of exciting stuff. We've shown a little bit of that so far in this video, about 20 minutes of it. So I'm going to jump ahead uh, so you all aren't uh, too bored, hopefully. And we've got a major battle coming up uh, with over 50,000 Yankees and over 25,000 Confederates. I think it's our largest battle to date uh, that we'll be fighting here in just a moment. Free trade, tariff, can cotton all help, but only to a point. I'm curious because it's very specific about British intervention if the French will ever intervene or is it well I mean the French were always dependent on whether the British would go would go or not but economy alerts yeah. is this 1.06 or 1.07 it's whatever the current version is on Steam I keep it updated through Steam Tony Mexican intervention escalates. The British and Spanish withdraw. I didn't know that they went in with the Mexi with the French initially. Napoleon III vows to conquer Mexico. The French push inland. And we've got a battle. Whoa. Okay, they got more men than I thought. 56,000? So the first and second corps are in position. We've got 25,000 men. But the Yanks are coming south with the Department of the Ohio with 14,000, the Army of Northeastern Virginia with 13,000, and eight, eight hours away if they show up. They've got the Department of the Peninsula and the Depart Army of Pennsylvania with a further 34,000 for a total of 56,000 men. Out number two to one. We've already beaten Robert Patterson a couple of times. I don't know why he's legendary. It is April 10th, 1862. A few days before some of our soldiers go home. Well, boys, this is a big one. Hopefully we're on the defensive and they come at us. The Battle of Manassas Junction. This is actually the third Battle of Manassas Junction, but... If I had been paying attention and saw they were coming at me, at 62,000... If I had seen they were coming at me, I would have brought the 15,000 men in the valley east to support us. Time for Tennessee to move to Shenandoah. I, I mean, we'll have a core that won't be engaged in any event. The Battle of the Ruin of Manassas Junction. So we'll say this. If PGT loses this battle again, we will replace him as the commander of the Army of Northern Virginia. The Battle of the Ruin of Manassas Junction. Well, Aldor, they did fight three times there. Or twice, I guess. But then there was also a couple of skirmishes around there. Warlog, thanks for the follow. Oh, there's multiple objectives. Our scouts report the enemy is near Manassas Junction, Virginia, and our army is to prepare for battle. We will face the Department of Pennsylvania under Robert Patterson with the strength of some zero men and zero guns. That's a lie. The enemy army is reported to be green and morale is broken? That doesn't seem right. So we have to hold Matthew and Henry House. This looks like almost historical deployments, although the Yanks came north, uh, north to south. So the Federals are going to come on the map east near Centerville. That's what this little blue arrow icon represents. 
our troops are all on the field. I guess, in theory, if we could meet them and f defeat their first two forces in less than eight hours. Can I really not deploy? Oh, I can. Then that would make perhaps the most sense. All right, let's get rid of this HQ report and scroll down here. So Van Dorn only has one cavalry brigade because the other two have not been recruited yet. But they do have Colt revolvers, which is nice. Um, what do we want to do here? So we've got two divisions of infantry under Lee. Where's the other core? Do they just show up, but they don't start on the map? I thought we had reinforcements. This just says it's the third core. First core or third core is arriving in two hours. Well, shit. So it's just the first core under uh, Lee for the moment, which is about 12,000 men. Not the best situation. Okay. Henry Hill, not the most defensible spot. We do have some points that we could use for earthworks. So they're going to have to come across the river or across the, the fords. So we have a couple of options here. We could try and defend up near the fords, which might give us a better chance of throwing the enemy back, but also does have the chance of us overextending ourselves, especially if they slip south near Mitchell's Ford and flank us. Or we could defend the hills themselves, use the woods and other terrain here. Reinforcements can enter from white entry points. Oh. Well, the okay. There's a lot of fords to try and defend from. I wonder... We could use one division to block farm and stone bridge. There's good high ground here. So Yule could do that, blocks these two fords with one division. Then Walton's division can hold Henry Hill on the flank and the high ground here. I don't really love that idea. Problem is, I don't know where they're going to come from. I think, most likely, at least the initial force, is going to come right down this main road near Stone Bridge. Van Dorn's troops have their revolvers. Hold on the high ground here. They don't have very long range with those weapons. I don't think they're going to come from this northernmost objective, but they could. Yeah, I mean, I could. I could also send my cavalry on the other side of the creek. You know, it might make the most sense. Send the cavalry out down to the south to see if they try and move south of us. Or maybe north to make sure they don't flank me north. That way I keep my troops in position along these these lines. Pillows, artillery. Okay, let's do...
Let's shift all the infantry to long range fire. Okay. Can these guys shoot over the top or just over here from the flank? I just can't see pretty limited coverage there behind that tree. This is not the best hill from a artillery vantage point perspective. I don't know. All right, that'll be a pretty good vantage point, I think. Jackson's brigade, you'll defend here. What do you guys, you guys have Lorenz rifles, so your range is a little bit worse? Hmm. I actually wonder if this division deploying further east is better because like this hill is nice and all but if we deploy here we get some fence line on one side and then we could use this wood line for some cover and the enemy would come across open ground but I guess they'd be kind of in a disadvantage in that the enemy would not be on a hill. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm getting a little too spread out here. Let's do this. Let's keep these guys compact until the other core arrives. Deploy here. Keep one brigade in reserve. And then we'll deploy these two brigades in this wood line. We're also going to go ahead and give them some breastworks. Not parapets, breastworks. So let's deploy these guys on the breastworks here and here. Okay, those guys are behind some nice breastworks. This brigade will be in reserve. So we'll deploy some breastworks. Here. And then here. Really? They're not all behind it? Okay. We'll extend it a bit. There they go. And then breastworks here. That's a long breastwork there. Definitely could also maybe extend the lines by putting like some skirmishers and stuff behind some of these things. I don't know if artillery breastworks make sense. But like perhaps putting skirmishers forward in some of these places over some of these fords makes sense. There's good high ground in front of Lewis and Ball's Ford over here. But I think we'll hold off on that for now. Meanwhile, Lee 
We'll move forward here to be with your core. And then lower guard, you'll position here on the flank, I guess. Also closer to Van Dorn, who I think we're going to go ahead and detach. So he can issue more direct orders. Okay. So Van Dorn, you're going to go scout Grigsby's farm. Is that the illustrious Grigsby? Does he? He really doesn't have to wait for those orders, does he? Gary Grigsby's farm, maybe? Does he really have to wait for those orders? He's not detached yet? Whatever. All right. Well, let's see what uh, the enemy has in store for me. Well, the enemy has intelligence on the size of our force, so. But in two hours, we'll get uh, another core. The enemy has to wait eight hours for some of its troops to come online. Uh, thanks for the follow. My line is so thin, a skirmish line could break through it. I mean, not quite, but it is pretty damn thin. All right. Van Dorn, get your force north or east and tell me where the Yanks are. Okay. Oh, shit. Pause. All right, so we spotted some enemy cavalry here. This appears to be the head of their column coming from Centerville. So we were right about the location of their force. No. Halt. He's supposed to be detached. I ordered him to be... Well, it says he's detached. So he shouldn't have to wait for the orders, I don't think. No, they just go right away. All right, they have Colt revolving rifles, which are excellent in terms of rate of fire. Pretty short range, though. First cavalry's coming up, 1,200 Federals. It's about evenly matched. But let's see if we can delay their advance a little bit with some skirmishing to the east. Buy some time. I wonder if our reinforcements will come up north there. The enemy's forming up into line. Historical quote from the Battle of Grigsby Farm. I feel like that's from something in the Overland campaign. I'm confused why they're taking so long to issue those orders. They should be detached. They should not be waiting for orders. Well, they followed them pretty quick. Dismount. We're in some nice cover. Federal infantry coming up here. The Indiana Brigade of about 1,800 men. Another brigade behind that. They're going to deploy and push my uh, cavalry back? Don't tell me they're going to form their whole army up on this, this little creek here because they've got a single brigade of infantry. Or not even infantry, of cavalry in front of them. It looks like they are. Or maybe they're going to flank me. I don't know. Some of those guys are heading south. It looks like they're forming up because of a single brigade. Well, all right. The enemy is spooked by Griggs Base Farm. All right. Any indication of the next core of our troops coming up? Where the fuck are they? HQ, tell me when they're coming. <laughs> Arriving in zero hours. They should be here now. 
Third core, where are you? Oh my God, there's so many of them. There's so many of them. We've only got, the, that's the bad thing with these Colt revolving rifles. They got a great rate of fire, 12 rounds a minute. They have 200 yards range. That's less than, um, that's like smoothbore range. Two more brigades. There's a lot of blue. I don't see much artillery though. This kind of reminds me of uh, in the uh, Peninsula campaign after uh, McClellan was pushed back to, oh my God, I can't remember the, was it James Landing or something? And uh, they were kind of just all set up along the, along the, the water line. And uh, Stuart comes up with some horse artillery and starts banging away at him. Now, it was probably a little impetuous because at least if my remem remembrance of the history is correct, the Federals were in a fairly vulnerable position that they did not fully recognize yet. Instead of bringing up like a considerable amount of artillery, it was just a couple of horse guns. Um, but it, it caused a delay and the Federals like shook out like a core to, to, sh to push them back. But... At least they're braver than McClellan. He'd be calling Lincoln for more reinforcements. Maybe. <laughs> they're bringing the whole goddamn force forward. Thanks for the follow, Nissan. All right, let's... I mean, they're going to push me back eventually. Van Dorn I had deployed in the previous battle. They didn't pay a lot of attention. I had a regiment on each, each crossing, and they, like, full-on routed him. So they're going to push forward eventually. Artillery incoming, my malicious fuck. Are they militia? I guess they're the South Carolina State Militia Unit. Where are you? Third Corps, Third Corps, where are you? K4, thanks for the follow. All right, well, Second Division, the Department of the Ohio. Do we know who's commanding the Department of the Ohio? Does HQ know? Uh, Department of the Ohio is under Brigadier General Henry Nagley. Okay. I don't know who you are. Never heard of you. Your reputation does not precede you. Sunset's probably about another four or five hours. Maybe six. It's April, so it's still early. What does it say? Does it tell me up here? Mostly clear, 61 degrees. Doesn't say when the sun goes down. Here they come. They're coming right for us. 2,400 men in the 1st Brigade of the Department of the Ohio. The cavalry is behind them for whatever bizarre reason. Are they going to charge me? Are there sabers drawn? No. Engage! Start shooting. There you go. You guys have Colt revolvers, so fire fast. Alright, so we are engaging the enemy horsemen. I'm guessing they have um, breach loaders, so they probably fire more quickly. Still, we're inflicting heavier losses on them than they on us. I don't know how long I'll be able to hold in this position, though. Let it get to two of these heart icons, and then we'll try and see if we can pull back. Because the enemy's trying to flank to the north, and we're really just trying to buy time. I'll hold all night if Butler demands it. I don't know about that one. We're also doing a little bit of damage to the infantry behind him, but not much. Alright, there's artillery firing at us now. K4, 
Can we withdraw? I do not know the best way to withdraw, but I would like to withdraw now. So, I guess mount up. You're going to be bigger targets, but mount up and retreat. Let's see. We were inflicting more casualties on them than they on us. 155 to, well, more than that. But I think the last couple of volleys changed things a bit. And now that we're retreating, I'm sure it's going to shift in their favor. I told you to retreat, boys, so please move it. Go quickly. You're going to get routed just because of withdrawing. I do feel like the retreat mechanic is much better in other Civil War games, like Scourge of War, or... Uh, why are you not retreating? I ordered you to fucking retreat, and you mounted, but you're not moving. You're just sitting there and eating fire. Well, now you're routed, so you're, it, it doesn't even matter. I don't, I don't understand that at all. I suppose we would have been better just to stay mounted up. But now this br brigade is broken and will likely not rally at all today. That's frustrating. I understand not making it too easy to like just jump out and leave. But that does not feel very accurate with the way that cavalry is used. They weren't waiting for a courier. They were they were just they were detached. I wonder if I hadn't given the order of where to move and if I just hit the retreat button if they would like break and retreat. You usually auto battle in the game. Yeah. Outnumbered 2 to 1. I feel like my only chance is if I uh if I fight. All right, we're going to move ahead a little bit here in just a moment. Uh, but I did want to interject. I do feel like the retreat mechanic in the game is is not the easiest to use. And I guess that makes some sense um, to have some penalties or challenges in war games with withdrawing once you're under fire. That's a realistic, uh, very difficult thing to try and do. Um, you could see I was kind of finicking with the retreat and fallback mechanics. The way that works is if the direct superior officer uh, to the unit that you're trying to issue the order to, if they're in the command radius and you issue the order to retreat or fall back, uh, if you do the fallback mechanic, the unit is supposed to begin withdrawing while still engaging with the enemy. If you do the retreat mechanic, they're just supposed to make best possible speed away from the enemy. It didn't seem like it was working to me. I didn't know at the time if my direct superior was in line of sight or not or in radius of its command capability. So that's possibly why we routed and were unable to withdraw. Um, and so that would, that would make sense as far as what happened there. I will say that in battles since, I've used the mechanic and seen it work. So that may have just been me being a little bit of a novice at the time that I was playing this. Uh, but I also do feel like the mechanic is... Like, units still get hung up, and falling back and retreating very rarely works for me. Unless you're at extreme range or not really engaged, like, you just take so much punishment. And withdrawing under fire is a hard thing to do, but it, I've, I've played other Civil War games with fallback and retreat mechanics. Games like Scourge of War, games like Ultimate General. And I think this one is either not terribly well executed or is just overly punishing. Um... It really feels like once you're engaged in any way with the enemy, your soldiers' feet are like moored to the... They're basically like... They've got like concrete buckets on their legs while they're getting shot at, and eventually they'll break. So I don't know how I feel on that, but anyway, just sort of my musing and jumping in here in the midst of the game. We're going to go ahead and jump ahead a few minutes to the end of the day and the start of the next day, and then our next video will cover uh, the conclusion of the battle here. It was mostly setting up and stuff, uh, a little bit of fighting here, a little bit of skirmishing on the first day's fight, and we're going to move into the next day now. The end of the day, troops resupplied. Stuart losing men, deployment. Okay, so what do I do? Oh, God. 
I can't even get Johnson's troops up to my lines. We're, we're cut off from each other. So let's get Longstreet as much as we can. Over here, Cooper, I guess. Over here. This is bad. This is real bad. The fact that I can't get... I'm out number two to one, and I can't get my troops into position. It's going to be bad. All right, at least we can make him take an intelligent route. Stuart, is he not broken anymore? He's eager. Okay, well, I guess detect to the north because I don't want to get flanked. They could definitely come down this road from the north. But I'm hoping the bulk of their troops are coming from the east. No, this is the next day. This is my redeploy. I mean, I could double quick him. That is an option, but they'll show up tired, which is not ideal. Okay. Such a long range fire. Brian's brigade, your reserve, I guess. Maybe we'll just deploy you down here in case they try and flank us because we did see him trying to cross balls in Lewis's Ford. And this indicator indicates there is an enemy between us, so we'll do that. We'll refuse that line, and then we'll also set up some entrenchments here, some breastworks. Not what I wanted to do. Okay. There's like some glitch with these guys, weren't they? Okay, anyway, so we'll reform our line on this hill. I can't destroy the, the bridge. Artillery is mostly deployed up here. There's a force here, but there's also a force coming up here. So there's a possibility Johnson's core could nicely come up in the rear of an enemy force, but it's not a great situation to be in. Now, the one positive is a lot of times the AI is not the best at knowing what to do. So I'm actually going to take a gamble here. We know there's troops here. We know there's troops here. I'm going to put Stuart on this hill. And there he did his goddamn job. All right, so there are forces coming up already from Newmarket, already behind our goddamn line. So they're coming up this road. To that end, I'm going to pull Hood's Brigade down here onto Henry Hill. Well, maybe not. Maybe over here? Maybe on Bald Hill? Let's do this. Let's take Walton's division. Move it on the high ground over here. In a line. All right, not that I want to, like, engage an enemy army with a division. But that's what we're going to have to do. So we'll put these guys behind these earthworks. Just 
We'll put three brigades back here. And then we'll put Brian's brigade over here on these earthworks. Um, Lee will go ahead and support over here. And then we're going to move at least one battery of artillery over here. Okay, they should be able to fight, fire over the top of our friends. For support. Pillow, the battery commander, will get into the front there. We have, wait, Hood is on reserve here too? We'll move Hood back over here. To guard this bridge, because there is still the enemy force opposite of here. So this is going to suck. Um... Okay, we'll put Stuart up here. Hopefully it'll prevent, it won't flank to the north. All right, well, this is not the best situation to be in. Here we go, boys. Longstreet, come up and form up in the enemy rear. Cooper, form up to the right of Longstreet. You guys are going to split off and use two roads. Come up into the rear of this enemy force. If the enemy is aggressive with one of their forces, maybe we can defeat them and then shift to the other. It'll be interesting to see if they actually fight or just deploy. Because the AI is usually not the best at being super aggressive. Someone's artillery shooting. Is it mine? Yep. Also, some of our troops are in their first battle. Fortunately, not the infantry in the way of this assault. Also, let's give these guys sharpshooters. The sharpshooter perk. Since I have them all set to engage at long range anyway. We'll see. Stuart broke. You bastard. Pontoon ready. Why the fuck would I want more bridges? Was that my pontoon or theirs? Engineering for my infantry have successfully assembled a pontoon you ordered. I didn't order a pontoon bridge. Fucking maniacs. Let's give them more river crossings because that sounds smart. All right. Well, they can easily overlap my troops in the south. Can my artillery in the north, are they shooting yet? Not yet. The enemy's about to enter range. Are they going to cross? Are they going to come right across at me with Mitchell's brigade? All right. They've formed up three brigades right in front of my own division on the south here. Looks like it's Ord's division. Fourth Brigade's coming into line. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I hope you enjoyed our continued look at Grand Tactician the Civil War. We'll fight the conclusion of this battle. It's a big one uh, in our next video. Until our next video, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, as always, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.